After World War I, Jewish families viewed France as a land of opportunity and equality. Thousands of Jewish immigrants entered the country, allowing Paris as the capital to become a large Jewish scene. However, beginning in 1930, the French Third Republic began to reconsider the Open Door policy. This enforced stricter limitations on immigration and also set up detention camps for refugees. Here is a view of Roser Street in the Jewish Quarter of Paris before World War II. The date is uncertain. This picture shows a street seen in the Jewish Quarter of Paris before World War II. Many of the individuals living in Paris were refugees who had fled Nazi persecution in the Third Reich. 75,000 resident Jews did not hold a French citizenship. The most personal account of life under Nazi rule while living in Paris is a diary kept by 21-year-old Helene Burr. During 1942 to 1944, Helene recorded down all her reactions and events that unfolded in front of her. The experiences and emotions Helene recorded in her journal of Nazi-occupied France show the effects that constant fear can have on human behavior. As Nazi policies escalated, Jews were forced to contemplate impending death and their future. While Helene used her diary as a method of escape and a way to reflect on a sense of belonging to her Jewish community. German forces invaded France on May 10, 1940. On June 22, 1940, France signed an armistice with Germany, which went into effect on June 25, 1940. Germany now occupied northern and western France under Nazi military control with Paris as its capital. With a larger rural part of the country left as unoccupied zone, the French National Assembly worked to develop a new leadership. For two years, southern and eastern France remained unoccupied. Finally, in 1942, the French National Assembly threw out the constitution of the Third Republic and placed the new Vinci regime. This newly established Vinci regime was under the rule of Marshal Henry Philip Piton. With a newly established Vinci regime in southern France and German-occupied northern and western zone, many Jews feared of the new restrictions and policies that were being placed on their public life. Here is a picture of ruined buildings in a French town destroyed by German forces in 1940. The fence around a children's public playground bears a sign forbidding entrance to Jews, Paris, France, 1942. This is one of the many examples of the restrictions placed on Jewish public life. Just as Helene Burr's father lost his business, this shop belonging to Jews has been given to a non-Jewish temporary administrator in Paris, April, 1942. Between the occupation of Paris to her arrest and deportation in 1944, Helene Burr's writing evolves from a carefree young woman who wrote about love and troubles of a long-distance relationship, balancing school, playing music, and taking care of her family while trying to live as much as a normal life that she can. Fear was still a part of her everyday life, and death lingered in the back of her mind. Helene still continued to live out as much as a life as a normal young woman and not allow Jude to define who she is. Deciding to stay in Paris during the Nazi occupation with her family and siblings, the Burrs were living very comfortable, respected high-class society French family. Helene looked to these new policies and restrictions placed on Jews as an order to test her own courage. June 8, 1942, Jews in German-occupied France were all required to wear yellow badges as identification. Helene embraced the star in her clothes, stairs, and names she was called. I was very courageous all day long. I held my head high and stared at the other people so hard that it made them avert their eyes. But it's difficult. Here is a picture of Jewish women wearing the required yellow badges in Paris, France, also June 8, 1942. As deportations of loved ones, including her father, on September 20, 1942, Helene's writing in her journal begins to change tone. The stories she is hearing of the camps and events around her are beginning to take a toll on her life. The journal then becomes a more serious testimony of the threats and close encounters she experiences 
on a day-to-day -day basis as a Jewish woman living in occupied France. Helene now becomes aware that her life, as well as everyone else, is now in jeopardy. The Byrd family avoided deportation until three months of the liberation in German-occupied Paris. In the last few weeks before Helene and her parents were deported, they moved throughout Paris hiding with different family and friends. They survived amongst other French Jewish families based on their father's status and high-ranking social class. Until one night on March 7th, the family decided to go back to their home. Within hours, Helene Burr was arrested with her family on March 8, 1944. It was her 23rd birthday. The deportations of Jews from France continued on until August 1944. According to the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, 77,000 Jews living in French territory perished in concentration camps and killing centers. Secrecy, torment, indifference, and constant looking over their shoulders explains why many people in France and the rest of Europe did not know the fate of innocent Holocaust victims. While growing up as a Jewish woman in her early 20s, Helene was a gifted student aspiring to reach her full potential in life, but all was cut short as Nazi policies escalated in Paris. According to historian Michael Morris, the final solution in France was a Nazi project from beginning to end. It is unlikely that the German authorities would have been successful in deporting such a large number of Jews from France without the aid and cooperation of French police and administrators. Following their arrest in March, Helene and her parents were deported to Auschwitz. Within months, Helene's mother and father died in the camp. Helene was transferred to Bergen-Belsen. On April 15, 1945, British forces liberated the camp. They found 60,000 prisoners of the camp, most who are seriously ill while thousands of corpses lay unburied on the campgrounds. Helene Burr was one of the bodies found unburied on the campgrounds. She died only days before the British liberated the camps. The difference in impact between reading an academic historian's account and a diary is the weight of personal narrative in which the reader becomes involved. Helene Burr's story is captivating and heart-rending precisely because it doesn't have to be. Although the journal was intended for her fiancé, this account provides a personal narrative of fear and death and deportation, which can be read through each line in her diary. As policies began to escalate, the fate of herself and other Jewish families is mentioned on every page. But this does not stop the dangerous volunteer work she does every day. Helene looks to find the strength every day to continue on her normal life. She perseveres up until her final days in Auschwitz, never allowing the word Jew to define who she is.